24 Hours of Le Mans 2022 getting underway with fans at the Circuit de la Sarthe for the first time in three years. The place packed for the pre-race ceremonies. The 2021 race got underway in raining conditions, but it was super hot for the start of the 2022 race. The 90th running of the world's greatest endurance motor race got underway with Toyota dominating, qualifying and locking out the front row of the grid. As they battled their hypercar rivals behind, there was trouble in the Le Mans prototype class in LMP2. Contact between the 31 WRT car and 22 United, winners in the last two seasons, saw the 22 cars race all but done in the first 200 metres. Jota would also pay a severe penalty. A one minute hold early in the race would take them out of contention. In the GT categories, in the hot and greasy conditions, Porsche seemed to have the upper hand. In the GTE AM class, the white WeatherTech car led a Porsche 1-2-3 as Ferrari and Aston Martin struggled. In the GTE Pro field, Porsche was also ahead of their longtime championship rivals, Ferrari last year's champions. But they weren't leading the category for the factory drivers. That honour went to the visitors from across the Atlantic. Corvette Racing running 1-2 in qualifying and they kept that pace up early on in the race. The pace was furious, but it looked as though the yellow cars were going to have the upper hand certainly early on as Porsche tried to match their pace on the searing racetrack at Le Mans. For most of the afternoon, Corvette dominated the GTE Pro class as Toyota led the field in hypercar and the LMP2 battle, a 27 strong field, was all action. The first sign of trouble in hypercar came courtesy of Alpine. Maggio Vazivier bringing the car in with what turned out to be first a clutch problem and then problems with the ignition coil packs. That would drop them outside of the top 20 overall. They would never regain the lost ground. The mighty 38 from Jota moved to the top of the LMP2 leaderboard, but as the afternoon shadows lengthened, they knew there was an awful lot of racing to go through the night and into the next day. In the night, the Corvettes continued to keep their stranglehold on the GTE Pro field until trouble for 63, a puncture at the rear, and that had knock-on effects. It would suffer more rear transmission problems before eventually the team were forced to give up the ghost. It was taking too much of their time, effort and resources, and it would be retired. And suddenly, in the night time, the witches came calling. One American team with trouble and then another. A spin for the 708 Glickenhaus, their better place car, as they tried to take the battle for overall victory to their rivals at Toyota. Little harm done in this incident, but any time lost in on-track or pit lane excursions is always going to be hard to recover against an enemy as well drilled as Toyota Gazoo Racing. Night time and the fans still packing the circuit to watch cars in action with the headlights on for the first time in years. Between the Toyotas, car number eight and car number seven, the ascendancy swung depending on how they caught traffic and the number of slow zones around the circuit that dealt with individual incidents. They kept their noses trouble free though and remained out front. Which would win will be a question for the daylight hours. Trouble in the GTE Pro class as Porsche started to reel in the Corvettes. The number 92 car, their lead machine, had a big blowout at the end of the super fast Mulsan straight. They managed to recover through the gravel trap and get back on track, but with more than a dozen kilometers on the circuit and half of that distance still to go back to the pits, the tire exploded, ripping the front of the car apart. The damage wasn't terminal, but it was an end to this car's hopes of victory. All the while, Toyota continued to extend their lead, but worrying signs 
as one car rolled to a halt and had to cycle through the electronics to get itself to restart. That had happened to the sister number eight car in the previous race at Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium. The number seven team saw that as a bad omen. They were able to restart and continued in the race, but they had lost the decisive advantage over the sister car. Corvette's race ended a little after breakfast time. The remaining car collected by Francois Perodo, gentleman driver in one of the LMP2 cars, trying to stay away from a class rival. He inadvertently clattered into the Corvette, which was sent flying into the barriers. The sole remaining yellow car in the race was out on the spot. Francois was as heartbroken as the Corvette team over what he said was the worst driving mistake of his career. He had caused Corvette to lose any hope of a podium finish and for that he was bitterly disappointed. He came into the pits and immediately made his way to the team to offer his sincere condolences and his apologies for bringing their race to a halt. There was nothing the driver could do, the damage was far too significant. Corvette's hopes of victory in 2022 were all over. And for AF Corsa, their chance of a win in the coveted Pro-Am class in NLMP2 was also done. Francois apologising to the head of GM Racing, Laura Clauser and the rest of the team. But the damage had been done. In the GTE Am class, the lead car for much of the race was the 33 Aston Martin from TF Sport. Ben Keating and the crew taking to the top step with a well-earned victory. Aston Martin going first and third. In GTE Pro, Ferrari rallied from a disappointing qualifying to finish second and third. But it was victory for the remaining Porsche that was still healthy. The 91 car taking the spoils. In LMP2, leading for three quarters of the distance, Mighty 38 from Jota led a 1-3 for their team, with newcomers Prema sandwiched between them, second in their first ever Le Mans. But overall, Toyota, as many had expected, dominated proceedings. It was the number eight car that had fewer problems. They claimed victory ahead of their championship leading rivals, the number seven team who won the race here last year and the championship at the end of 2021. Between the two Toyota teams, there is always so little to choose that it's often fate that intervenes to decide the winners. And so it proved at Le Mans 2022. Toyota taking on the hypercar class and again winning it as they lay down the challenge to the new vehicles that will appear for the centenary race in 2023. For now though, to the victors, the spoils. Toyota victorious again at the Circuit de la Sarte. They won the last ever LMP1 race in 2021, the first ever in the hypercar class and they retain their winning record. A 1-2 result with Glickenhaus in third. Jota first and third in LMP2. In the GTE Pro class, the sole healthy Porsche came out on top. Fred Makovici taking his first ever Le Mans victory. And Ben Keating, who won a few years ago in a Ford GT, only to lose it post-race with a technicality. His Aston Martin claimed the GTE Am class, but the winners predominantly were the fans. Back at Le Mans for the first time in three years and loving every minute of a classic race held in beautiful conditions. Toyota continued to dominate this new top tier of sports car racing, hypercar, but there are manufacturers queuing up to have a tilt at the world's greatest motor race in the years that will come. A golden era of sports car racing for prototypes and for GTs is dawning, with the arrival of more hypercar manufacturers and the introduction of GT3 spreading the field wide for all sorts of different cars to come and race at the world's greatest endurance motor race. But for now, tennis champion Joe Wilfred Songa presenting the winners with their trophies. Toyota victorious at Le Mans in 2022. They are the benchmark in hypercar, those who come 
know who they have to beat, and they have to beat Le Mans itself.